I'm just trying to tell you what the Bible says. Yeah. Laborers are few. Yeah. Let's tell somebody, don't drag your feet. Don't drag your feet. Now, as I mentioned that up again, there is a message in John yeah. chapter 9 that aligns with the idea of not dragging our feet. In John chapter 9, the case of a blind man is told. Jesus, as he goes out of Jericho, comes in contact with a man who has been blind from birth. Since his exit from the womb and entry into the world, he has been blind. Visually impaired. Unable to naturally or physically see around in either fashion, near or far. The man is blind. However, he is not the most familiar blind man in the scriptures. The most familiar blind man is blind Barnabas. Blind Barnabas was a blind baby sitting by the roadside yelling, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And according to the scriptures, the Bible says his faith helped him to regain his sight. However, the case for consideration today is a much different situation. Jesus healed the blind man in the previous instance without explanation. Bartimaeus asked for his sight to be restored, and Jesus performed the miracle without question. However, in John's gospel, a short exchange occurs because of the length of time that the man had been blind. Again, according to the scriptures, this man had been blind from birth. He had always been blind. He never had the ability to see the sun or the moon light. He had never been able to identify colors or patterns. He was blind from birth. That alone, my friends, here it is, peak the curiosity of the disciples. They, in a rather judgmental way, mm -hmm. began to ask questions. Mm -hmm. And they were doing, in my honest opinion, the questions weren't so nice. Mm -hmm. Because they associated this man's blind condition with sin. Mm -hmm. yeah. They were critical mm -hmm. of his blindness. Yeah. They, they, they were skeptical about his condition. They said, Master! Who sinned? Yes. <laughs> this man or his parents? Who is in the wrong? Who, who can we blame? Who, who can we point the finger at? Yes. Surely someone is the reason this man is blind. No, 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 no one, no one gets this kind of condition without being charged with some kind of wrongdoing. Jesus, who messed up? Who, 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 who dropped the ball? Who slipped or dashed their foot against the stone? Jesus, who sinned? Jesus answered them and said, neither have this man sinned, mm -hmm. nor his parents, but, but, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. In other words, Jesus tells them, take your mouth off that. Don't, 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 don't be so quick to point the finger. Don't let society's view take your Christian understanding because no one is to blame for this man's blindness. Instead, this blind man's condition was for the glory of God. It was not the result of wrongdoing, but God was going to use this man's story as a testimony for the glory of God. God's powerful works would be on display in the life of the blind man, and that's why he was blind all along. And I believe, my friends, that we will learn a valuable lesson from this exchange. First of all, as people of God, we must refrain from being so judgmental to one another. Amen. Uh oh. Amen. Did I say that out loud? Oh, well, it's already out there now. Let me say it again. 
We got to refrain from being so judgmental toward one another. Our conditions, our blindness is not the direct result of something we've done wrong. Yeah, yeah. Some of us, we're not going through this or going through that because we did something wrong or we've fallen from grace. No, sometimes trouble comes into our life for the glory of God. Amen. So, so, so sometimes, sometimes God sends trouble to our address so that he can prove to somebody that he's still large and in charge. So, so sometimes, sometimes God allows us to go through for his glory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was sitting and I was thinking about that and I, I thought about that when, when my wife and I went through our trouble with infertility. Uh -huh. It was not because we had done anything wrong. It, it was not because, amen, glory to God, that I had done something or she had done something. No, it was for the glory of God. Look, look, looking back, looking back on those months of treatment and inability to conceive and now being blessed with double. Amen. Amen. I don't see now, but it was all for the glory of God. It, it proves to me that, that trouble sometimes is not because I fail. Trouble sometimes is not because I've done something that God is not pleased with. Work from the grave. You and I got to work, catch 
this and not drag our feet. And that's the message that Jesus is trying to get across to us today. Jesus is not speaking about dying. He's speaking about dragging our feet. When he says I must work the work of him that sent me while it is dead, he said I can't drag my feet while it's dead. I can't waste time while it's dead. I can't be slothful while it's dead. I got to get on the good foot. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't put off for tomorrow what I need to be doing today. Why? Because when the night shall come, somebody help me preach here. No man can work. What Jesus is explaining is the urgency of ministry. He's telling us this is not something that you can drag your feet on. You cannot be deliberately slow when it comes to working for the Lord. You can't have a reluctancy to act when it comes to working for the Lord. You can't be sitting around here talking about, I'm waiting on this person. And that person is waiting on another person. You can't push things to one group while you don't have no responsibility. You can't say, that's the preacher job while all these pews is empty in here. Somebody help me preach here. People of God, we can't drag our feet. There's an urgency for working for the Lord. We got to take immediate action. Let's give intentional attention to the things of the Lord. Drop everything. And get it hurt. I said drop everything. And get it hurt. I said drop everything. And get it hurt. You got to stop dragging your feet. Quit making all those excuses. I would do this, but I don't like that person. I would do that, but they don't understand me. I would do this and the other, but no, I ain't going down there with them people and they ain't doing the same old thing. They, they, I ain't going to, no, stop dragging your feet. Boys, I'm ready to go. I'm reminded of Isaac. I was thinking about you this morning on my way from Raleigh. And it was in the year that King Uzziah died. Right. Isaiah said, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. He said, and his train filled the temple. He said, and above the stood the seraph from each one had six wings. And the twain covered their face and their feet. And the other one cried unto the other and said, Holy, holy. Holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door moved at the voice of the Lord. Amen. And the Bible said that the whole house was filled with smoke. Then Isaiah said, Woe is me. I am a man under. I'm a man of unclean lips. He said, for my eyes have seen the glory of the Lord. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand. And Ray was here today. He would say, he took the coal and touched my lips. Hallelujah. And his iniquity was taken from me. Then he said, I heard a voice from the Lord. Saying, who shall I say? Who shall I say? And who will go? Who will go for us? Then Isaiah said, Here am I. Lord, you can send me. I gotta go for Pine Grove. I wonder, is there anybody in the house today that can say, Here am I? Lord, send me. If you need me to go, send me. What you need me to do, send me. I promise not to drag my feet. But if you send me, I'll go. I'll go if I have. 
to go Let's 
You are the only light that some people will ever see. Amen. What are you doing with it? That's right. I'm living. So that when it's all over, I can look up to heaven. And I can tell the Lord, I'm ready now. I'm ready to be poured out.
So if you will just close your eyes. And I want you to have a conversation with the Lord. Tell him where you fall. Tell him where you fail. Tell him where you drifted. And then I want you to open your mouth to the Lord.
coming from Christian schools and just saying, here, my wife will struggle to come. We got a baby in the hand for real. Amen. Churches of love, our people will come. After which, hey, our office will come. And all members of the Body Road Church, let's come around. Amen. Let's show her some love. In Jesus' name, welcome her to this, the Body Road Free Will Baptist Church. Amen. Amen. Let's eat, let's fellowship with each other in Jesus' name. 